Welcome to VU Spotlight, the program that highlights Valparaiso University. I'm Justin Leo. And I'm Carly Hively, and right now we're standing in the newly constructed Hari Student Union. The union is located at the heart of campus and provides a hub for many student activities. In this episode of VU Spotlight, we'll look inside Valparaiso University and the surrounding community, along with the campus radio station, Department of Meteorology, VU Athletics, and the fitness program. We're also going to be taking a look at Greek life here on campus, a unique glance at two student choir organizations, and also take a tour of the city of Valparaiso. Our first look is at the Department of Meteorology, one of the fastest growing majors on campus thanks to its brand new facilities and dedicated staff. However, the student involvement is really what makes this department so special. There are very few things that are as awe-inspiring as a thunderstorm. The torrential rain, limb-shattering lightning, and devastating tornadoes can turn a beautiful day into a disaster. But at Valparaiso University, the students in the meteorology department do more than simply watch the weather. They predict it. Well, we, we pride ourselves in having students involved outside the classroom. That could mean working for the local schools and the internship opportunities they have to forecast for the public schools to help with uh, decisions regarding late starts or, or things like that. We have students that are working on the storm ready status, which is a federal status that, that is uh, given to institutions who, are, who have their emergency management house in order. So we have students working on that. We have students in our honor society who do everything from our field day that serves 700 or 800 students, uh, grade school age students around the state, and around the region rather, uh, to uh, having mentoring programs for our meteorology program, to uh, outreach, giving talks in schools, our COCO RAS, weather observing network, all kinds of, of different things that, that we encourage students to get involved in. I think the fact that, that faculty are choose to be here because we like to teach. I mean, that's that's our first and most important driving factor. I mean, we have, an, we have a, a bit of an advantage here at Valpo Meteorology in that there aren't a lot of schools our size that have a robust and, and, and large program like we do. Uh, so most of our competition come from the major research schools where there's lots of TAs, the faculty by and large don't like to teach undergraduates, or if they do, they only teach them occasionally. Here, that's what we like to do, and we think that's where our competitive advantage is, and that's really what we've built our, our program on. So here at Valpo, you can forecast for your future. Hi, I'm Molly Smirka. After each segment of Spotlight on VU, I will be providing you with tidbits about the university. Did you know Calais Christopher Hall was named in the honor of the late Dr. Ferenc Calais, a geography professor, and the Christopher family? Calais Christopher Hall was first built in 2004 and utilized in spring of 2005. The Department of Geography and Meteorology was formerly housed in the basement of Mueller Hall. Some meteorology students move on to become on-air personalities who tell you what you should be wearing or not wearing. But there's another place where students go to gain experience behind the microphone. That's Valparaiso's award-winning radio station, WVUR. The Source 95.1 is our college radio station here at Valpo. Uh, we've been broadcasting on campus for almost 50 years now. Um, and it's a great place where students of all different majors or grades can come together and practice being broadcasters. Or practice being a DJ or doing whatever really that they want. We're pretty open and we're pretty flexible and try to get as many people involved as possible. Well, you can get involved, I mean, from, from a, a grassroots standpoint of just being a DJ, just being someone who's involved, you know, two hours a week, come in, do a radio show, whatever you want to do is fine. All the way up to being the general manager or the program director where you're putting in, you know, 15 to 20 maybe documented hours a week, but probably even more so than that in terms of really being the lifeblood of the radio station. For the men's basketball team and the football team, we host the uh, studio section of that game and we do the broadcasting, so we're part of the Valpo Sports Radio Network and we do all the hosting and do all of the work for that. We're like the only Division I college um, in the country that has student broadcasters broadcast all their men's basketball games. I think that, that WVUR is a, it's as close as we can get to a real working scenario. I still think it, it, it helps quite a bit 
you can then walk into any radio station and say, I've done this. The big goal at maybe an IU or a Purdue is to get on the air your senior year. But we give you, an, we give you a shift the day you walk onto campus as a freshman. Our goal for your senior year is that you've got a job locked up already. We also do Source Stock, which is our really big concert we do in the fall. Last year we had Reliant K, so we had almost 900 students there. And uh, we try to throw a huge show like that as well as, you know, acoustic sets and kind of stuff like that around campus. You know, we've had the opportunity to uh, place very well at state competitions. You know, um, my freshman year, I guess, so like three years ago, we won Indiana School of the Year. Then last year, um, we also won Indiana School of the Year. They go in there every day. They accomplish things. They set out goals. We're going to do this concert. We're going to do this event. And it really does work into what a radio station actually does. To be honest with you, 99.9% .9 of people walk through the door are not going to be professional radio DJs when they get out of here. And that's fine. They don't have to be, but hopefully they can get something out of it. So we stress the idea of you can be a professional and work really hard day in and day out at what you're doing, but also have fun while you're at it. Did you know, when WVR began broadcasting, it was located in a building on old campus, which is now home to the Valparaiso University Police Department. While Valpo prides itself on offering great educational and extracurricular opportunities, there are also many different athletic outlets as well. This can range from playing on one of our many Division I teams to join an intramural group or even just shooting hoops with friends. VU makes it easy for students to stay physically fit and have fun doing it. Like many other colleges, Valparaiso University offers a variety of intercollegiate athletics such as baseball, soccer, and basketball. However, being an athlete here at VU means much more than just being successful in sports. We like to say here that um, Valparaiso Crusaders champions in competition, classroom, community, and I think their student athletes really exemplify that, and I think they're great representatives of the student body as a whole. Many of the sporting events are held here at the Athletics Recreation Center. Its main arena can hold upwards of 6,000 spectators. This building that we're in right now, the Ark, the, 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 the piece that people think of as the Ark was, was put up in 1984, uh, but this building is actually consists of four different buildings. Um, the original uh, uh, building, the, which was referred to as the Hilltop Building, was uh, um, opened in 1939, and it's actually the second oldest building on campus now. And but here at VU, keeping fit isn't only for student athletes. All students and faculty members are encouraged to use the Athletics Recreation Center to stay healthy. The ARC uh, offers a facility uh, that's uh, unlike any other I've seen. Uh, it's student run. Yeah. We offer a pool, a racquetball court, a weight room for our students. Uh, we also offer courts, uh, three different courts uh, for our students to play on while they're here as well. If you're looking to be a little bit more competitive, why not sign up for intramural sports? Intramurals are held throughout the entire school year, and Velpo offers a wide range of choices including volleyball, basketball, and softball. Velpo prides itself on providing the best workout environment it can for its students. That's why starting this fall, V will be opening a new fitness center located next to the Ark. We're very excited about the fact that the, um, that, uh, the bookstore is being converted to a, um, um, a fitness center, uh, which will open in August for all students. Uh, we're going to have about, I think it's about 4,500 square feet um, of um, exercise and fitness activity that's going to have all brand new cardio equipment. Weight room right here is not too bad, uh, but I'm really looking forward to the new facility. Um, I'm sure it's going to have some better hours and more equipment, so you're not always as cramped when you come in and try and work out. So whether you're at Velpo to play for the team or you just want to work out, VU offers a great fitness program that's easy and accessible to everyone. Did you know, VU is upgrading their athletic facilities. We're here at newly renovated Brown Field, which now has artificial turf and a new scoreboard. VU is also adding Division I golf and bowling teams in fall of 2009. Athletics is just one of the many ways on campus that students can come together. However, one of the most popular methods is to join one of the sisterhoods or brotherhoods of Valparaiso Greek life. Fraternities and sororities offer students valuable leadership experience while lending a hand in the community and making friendships that last a lifetime. Greek life is an important part of any college campus. 
providing students the ability to form long-lasting friendships through the bonds of brother and sisterhood. Here at Valpo, the Greek program makes sure to emphasize the building of these relationships. At Valpo, there's only about, the largest sorority has about 60 girls in it, so at other campuses you could have 30 in your pledge class, which makes it really impossible to know all of the girls in your sorority. And here it's, you can easily know all the girls in your sorority and a lot of the girls in other sororities, so it makes it a big Greek community. Valpo's Greeks are unique in that not only do they form strong networks among their organizations, they also build connections between each other and within the independent Valpo community. One of the main resources for this is the Interfraternity Council. The Interfraternity Council is set up to basically be a means between each of the fraternities on campus, all nine of them, and our goal is to promote good behaviors and events and such throughout the Greek community. We're trying to, to work on actually coming up with more events that we can interact with all students on campus and not just Greeks ourselves because it's really the community that we're trying to build um, and so often we kind of get sucked into uh, just being with our, ourselves. Greek organizations are also known to get involved outside of the university, whether it be helping out at local soup kitchens or hosting events for charities. One big event that we do is we do a three-on-three -three basketball tournament in the spring to benefit the Make-A-Wish Foundation. So we get campus teams involved to come out, donate money, and play basketball for raise money for a good cause. An important thing to remember, never write off Greek life at VU until you experience it yourself. Many Greek members have come to VU and were surprised by how much they enjoyed the Greek experience. The first day I was here, um, I was 100% against it. And then a couple guys invited me over and I realized that it wasn't just a place to party, that it was a brotherhood. You know, personally, I never thought I would be in a fraternity. And when I came to Valpo, I thought that it was a great opportunity for social networking, for uh, being involved on campus. And I can personally say that uh, I'm a totally different person today because of uh, the Greek organization that I'm in. If Greek life is not your thing, you can still find what you're looking for. VU makes it easy to create your own group or organization. That's what these students did. Let's take a look at two very interesting student choirs here on campus. Vuvox is the only male a cappella group on campus. We formed about a year ago. A couple guys, we got together and we're like, there's no a cappella group on campus. So we just started singing. Um, a lot of us are are in the in the VUCA slash the music department, but there's a lot of us that aren't either. We uh, had auditions earlier this year and I uh, got a whole bunch of new guys. It's a pretty young group. Um, I think there's like two seniors of us leaving, so this group should be around for a little while. We're a group of about 10 to 12 is usually how many we let into the group. We have a CD, it's called a Headliner. You can check it out, it's on iTunes. Um, we recorded actually uh, about a year ago, we started recording it, so um, we're hopefully gonna be coming out with another album by the end of the year. There's a whole bunch of different styles that we really all like, and um, we just find that this group is a way for us to sort of um, express all those different musical tastes. In 2004, two girls named Tracy and Libby, they just wanted an acapella group and there wasn't one on campus at all. And so they just started up, got some girls, and played the acapellas. So we choose our own music, we run our own practices. We usually do, um, we've done some country, we've done some hip hop. Personally, I've really enjoyed the rap songs that we've done. Because <laughs> it's really funny to just break out in a rap song in the middle of a concert. Gangster's Paradise really threw people off. We do other things like Billy Joel and we did Trash in the Camp from Tarzan. So just whatever we think is fun, we have whole huge binders full of music in our lockers that we can flip through of old stuff. Um, there's usually between, I would say like 11 to 15 girls. Um, I think right now we have 12. The thing I like about the group is you don't just stay on your part you get to try out all different parts of song. So it really like pushes what you're used to. 
I think, I mean, we always just want to continually improve ourselves and like expand our horizons and we always want to have a really wide variety of types of songs because we want to keep people excited and um, into the group and just waiting to see what we'll do next. <laughs>